Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. He's looking at a Range Rover Vogue here. Now this one has got a bit of an extreme story with it. It's come down from Norfolk, so probably three hours drive, something like that. Um, she's been to a couple of garages. She's been quoted for a replacement engine. It's been told it needs a replacement engine. Uh, and then went to another garage and they told her it needs a replacement catalyst, uh, NOx sensors and add blue tank. So let's get in and have a look. Okay, I'm using my launch Eurotab 3. We've already just run a scan here. We have NOx exceedance, P2BAE, P2BAF. NOx exceedance, NOx exceedance. So I'm not sure where they've got... It needs blah blah blah, blah new um, catalyst, add blue tank, all this. Um, well, she's been quoted over three and a half grand to get it repaired. Um, but... The, to be fair, the garage has said, look, but we're not really sure. We don't know what it needs. You, you might be best going back to Land Rover. Uh, she's been to another garage. You, it quoted her, said the, sort of this, basically the same thing. We, all we can do is try and change all of these parts. And we're not really sure on the fault. So, of course, she's not going to go ahead with it, uh, getting quoted that sort of money. And them telling you that they're not really you know they don't really have any experience in that area so that's why she's driven down to me today uh, I don't see any reason here why one garage has quoted for an engine replacement let's have a look I haven't really gone through all of these yet I've only clicked on the ECM uh, quiescent, quiescent relay box I've seen that fault before so again all of this just points to me that the battery is either being flat at some point or it's a weak battery at the minute so first thing I do with these faults is check the add blue level. Okay, so we're going to start topping up the add blue here. So that's five liters, and that's ten liters. And now we are on the next bag. Okay, so that's fifteen liters gone in there. Now, what is the capacity of the add blue tank on this, according to Land Rover, fourteen point five liters? So of course that was bone dry. So, from here on, I can almost guarantee this car doesn't need any parts whatsoever to fix that issue. So what we're going to do is, on the customer request, is to clean the AdBlue injector and maybe the catalyst. So, all of these problems is voltage related issues, so I'm not going to worry about none of these at the minute. Going to clear all of these faults. Would be better if I switched the ignition on. And let's try that again. Now I'm going to go to special functions and exhaust emission. No, uh, we'll look for add blue. Nothing in there that I'm looking for. We need to look for an add blue sort of reset. Reset catalyst start inhibit. Um, I'd rather look for the this one, reducting quality monitor. I'll try that again. Okay, so that's not working. So we'll try the catalyst start inhibit reset. So that's done. Okay, let's start the engine up. So the AdBlue uh, fault now has cleared there. Now let's listen to that noise about why it needs a new engine. Uh, can't really hear it from here. You can hear it under the arch, sort of like a scraping, grinding noise, like a dry grinding noise. That to me sounds like an alternator or maybe a AC pump grinding, sort of like a dry grinding noise. They st so someone's had a look at it and told her it's the 
it's the crank bearing. I, I, I highly doubt that because it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like a sounds like a dry pulley. Having a look under here, I can almost guarantee it's definitely a dry pulley there. So either the idler pulley or the alternator, or something like that. Okay, so for that pulley noise, I'm not going to dismantle that hair on the side of the road. Um, being a mobile mechanic, I'm going to get that sent over to a friend of mine who's got a bit more um, room and a bit more, you know, garage space to li have it lifted up and spend some time going through that. But I can almost guarantee that there's no issue with that engine. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why they were getting caught at that. Okay, so now I'm going to start cleaning out the Abel injector. Now this might not always be necessary. You might be able to get away with what I've just done, topping up your AdBlue, doing an AdBlue reset, and if you're lucky, you'll be okay. But I don't want to send this person on a three hour drive away on a chance. So we're gonna clean the AdBlue system and clean the catalyst. She wants it done anyway, so we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna remove this little uh, cross member brace here, just so we can get a little bit of better access up to the AdBlue injector there. So that's not a good start. We have a corroded bolt on the AdBlue pump there, a blue injector. Okay, now we've got that AdBlue pump down there, we're just gonna try and clean off that mess that is covering the little nozzles there. You should have three little pinhole nozzles that you can see. So we're just gonna pick some of this away and then use a little bit of water and DPF cleaner mix to clean it off. So that's what it should look like. Nice and clean and you can see the little nozzles there now. Now you're also going to need to clean the little port there where the blue goes into, if we can show you that. Just around about there. So we've got a replacement bolt here we can use for the injector clamp. Okay, now all the rest has been put back together. We use a little pair of those. Uh, hose clamp pliers just to clamp the injector clamp back together. Okay, so now I can get it back down off the ramp. Now with these engines, the catalyst sits right up the top here. There's no direct access that I can see to get directly into the catalyst. Um, but if we go further down, it just goes directly to the DPF. So I'm going to put some cleaner through the low pressure EGR with the engine running and hopefully that'll circulate the system and go through. Right, I've got some cleaning fluid, Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid. That's mixed in, in the gun here with a little bit of water. Okay, we've got it hooked up to the low pressure EGR pipe right here. So I've disconnected it from that sensor. And we're just gonna spray a few second intervals of cleaner through there with the engine running. Right, so while that's settling for a minute, I'll give you a quick explanation of what's going on. I know I don't always explain things properly uh, for those who, who don't really understand how things work, but obviously it's quoted for loads of replacement parts for the the Catalyst and AdBlue system. Now, I don't think it's the mechanic's fault for quoting on that because the, the, the codes that come up are a bit misleading. Nox exceedance could mean that the, the, the Catalyst isn't working properly. But in my experience, always on these Land Rovers, um, Range Rover, Discovery 5, any of them, if you let the AdBlue go completely dry, it just knocks out the whole system. Um, it then crystallizes everything, and you'll get a, a, a Nox Exceedance code come up. The simplest way, if you don't have any tools, you can always try to just top up your AdBlue, take it on a, on a bit of a drive, and see if that works. If not, get the AdBlue system reset. And if you want to go the you know the full way around it, take off the AdBlue injector like I've done here, clean it, and put a bit of cleaner if you can get through the, the catalyst. The catalyst on these is pretty sealed up. There's no really direct access into it. Okay, so I did move the vehicle around to the back here for just to make it a little bit easier for me to work on. So now we've cleaned out the, we've put some cleaner through the system, and we'll take it on a test drive. Okay, so we've just done like three or four miles on a journey, done a rescan, everything's clear, apart from one or two minor electrical faults there that I'm not really interested in. Okay, so we're all about done on this 
like I said, didn't need any parts, and there, there wouldn't have been a fault if the AdBlue level was kept to the right uh, to the right level. If it, if the AdBlue level didn't run out, I don't think any of these problems would have happened. So if you get a P2B AE code on one of these, likeliness is that you've run the AdBlue level too low, and that's where you need to start looking. So that's it, Rod. All just about finished on that, and see you on our next video.